is Octave Leap. Innovation, regeneration, and human optimization. Welcome to the Octave Leap podcast with your host, David Kahn. And we are here continuing with the theme of community this month. And we're talking about a really important part of community, which is movement and dance and music. And traditionally, this has been the heart of many of the communities around the world throughout history. We've all gathered together and bonded around the dance for um the dance floor or the the central fire or whatever it is and we've moved and we've sweated and we've got rid of our grievances to purify ourselves and connect with each other better and interestingly enough uh my good friend martin who you may know from previous podcasts about digital security or um about uh natural contraception he is actually a ecstatic dance DJ who's traveled the entire world spreading the message of movement, dance, rhythm, and music. And so I'd love to welcome Martin to the Octave Leap podcast today. Martin, so good to have you. How are you today? Hi, Dave. Thank you for having me again. Looking forward to this like really important topic. Great. Yes. So... Let's jump right in, and why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience with movement, music, and dance, and why you feel it is so important? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess my, my whole movement and dance exploration started when I was uh, just five Let years me old. You, Martin. We're getting a little bit of that crackling noise again. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? We can hear you, but uh, yeah, it's just crackling a bit. Okay, let's try it. And if not, I'll switch uh, microphone. Okay. Just let me know. Whatever you did before worked very nicely and you were nice and crisp and clear. Then let me quickly switch back and forth. Let's see. Okay. Technical issues might happen, right? <laughs> Even to the tech guys. Yes, exactly. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, yes. Okay, and let me switch back and let's see if it's, is it working better now? Without yeah, the... that works nicely. Yeah. Okay. It's but... it's that old IT thing, right? You just turn it off and yes, then you turn yes. it back on again you and turn it it's off perfection. and on and everything's working. Exactly. Um, so actually it, it involuntarily started when I was just five years old and my mom told me, you know, you go to ballet class so uh, i'm from austria so uh, all this classical music and ballet and tap dance is, is quite traditional here and yeah so she put me in that class and and if you've ever seen like the the nutcracker or anything it's like this ballet thing like very structured you have your your steps you have like everything quite modeled out mm -hmm. and um when i was 10 i was like mom <laughs> screw you <laughs> i'm not continuing that <laughs> but uh with 15 she got me again and uh, it's very traditional also in austria with 15 that you go into a dance school and then you learn uh, the ballroom dances like the viennese waltz and slow waltz and tango and that kind of stuff um but somehow we got into the wrong school and it was more of like a dance sport club so like a, a month later no sorry a year later we started dancing competitions and I did that for roughly nine years. And yeah, also like very structured. You have your steps, you have your program, you have, uh, you go to competitions, you, you have your, your judges and so on. So it's like very um, westernized dancing, I would say. Yes, and, it's structured uh, like westernized society, right? Yes, yes. And I'm, I'm <laughs> saying that for a reason because now I'm going the other way. <laughs> and I recently read like, ecstatic dance whatever you heard about dance ecstatic dance is the exact opposite of what you heard about dance in the west yeah. and i really like that uh, explanation Let's is my voice better now just to do a quick yeah check? it's much better perfect yeah. perfect so what did you enjoy about the structured approach what did you really get out of going through that um style of learning mm -hmm. um i felt like i didn't and well i felt and also like my family everyone always said you know 
our families, we are not dancers. So um, we don't dance because we just can't do it. It's kind of this, this um, societal conditioning. You cannot dance, you cannot sing, you cannot do whatever. Um, but somehow, I think once you, once you get the hold of it, once you get the feeling for it, um, it, just, it just starts flowing. Yeah. I think it's this one point is when the conditioning is broken. <laughs> so when the conditioning towards you can't do it is broken, you it, it suddenly starts flowing. And it might not start flowing exactly the way it's it's kind of meant to be, but it starts flowing in your own way. And um yeah, this structure kind of kind of gave me um like a task to work on. Because like, like, yeah, the Western mindset is like, you have a problem, solution, problem, solution. It's like very mathematically oriented, I guess. Right. And with that, having a program, having the steps, I could work through something. Um, but yeah, then eventually I, I got to know ecstatic dance. And it was like, do whatever you want. Just feel your body, just no steps, no, no talking, no um not necessarily like touching someone else because from the from the ballroom dancing i was already ballroom and latin i was always used to have a partner and yeah suddenly it's like all of that is gone so what do you do with that free space <laughs> right it's uh, and it was very interesting for me to start exploring like the opposite way yeah I'm going to actually have to get you to switch back to your computer microphone because uh, this okay. one, the crackling seems to be creeping in a bit. Okay. Interesting that it kind of goes on and off. Okay. I hope you can still hear me now. Is it okay now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then let's do it with this. Um, yeah. So, but from the ecstatic dance part, what actually, what always... Uh, there is this song, I, I can never remember if it's Sean Miles or Robert Miles, I think it's Robert Miles, uh, music. And he sings, music was, it was my first love and it will be my last. And that's kind of the feeling that I have. It's like music is for me um, something that really allows me to drop in, especially when I like mix it myself and when mm. I mix my own stuff that I really love. And... Um, yeah, so my, my part in ecstatic dance that I love the most is actually the teaching part, not necessarily the dancing part. Oh, very cool. So for those who might not be familiar so much with ecstatic dance, what is ecstatic dance and what does it mean to you? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think the easiest way to describe it for those who are maybe more familiar with, uh, um, I don't want to say traditional dance because I think traditional dance is ecstatic dance. <laughs> Um, but more like um, um, the, the westernized ballroom, like organized uh, dance. Um, to me, it, it kind of, and there's a reason why it's called ecstatic. And ecstatic means actually to get out of the body. And that's basically one of the, one of the, the, the things. I mean, we are, we are, Oh, let's let's let me let me get some structure into the into the chaos of explaining that. First, there are some guidelines, um, and I, I never say rules; I always say guidelines. But it's it kind of came out of the idea of we don't want to do it like Saturday night, being drunk, being on drugs, uh, whole night. That would dancing. really get you out of the body. Hmm? Yes, yes, yes. So it's like it unconsciously gets you out of the body. That's true. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. Um, it kind of came out of, of, of the idea of let's do it in the afternoon, let's do it consciously, let's not use any drugs, um, let's not wear shoes, let's not talk because the talking always gets you back into, into um, so you, you, you are kind of walking through the different uh, brain waves and uh, we have like our normal brain waves like talking and, and logic and reasoning and everything and then we go into this more meditative brain waves. Um, like alpha, I, I don't want to, uh, yeah. just keep it simple. <laughs> um, so this kind of meditative, uh, brain waves. And when we start talking, uh, we're getting kicked out of these meditative brain waves. 
So uh, that's why it's also recommended not to talk. And another guideline is not wearing shoes. Um, simply for the reason that we want to connect with Mother Earth, we want to connect with the, the floor we are on. Um, Don't you think the word not... then ecstatic isn't really fitting? Because it sounds like you're connecting more with yourself, more with the Earth that you're walking on. It's, I think it's, it's, kind, of, uh, it's kind of both. Because we so much um, um, identify with our ego, with the body the ego creates and with the world the ego creates. And by stepping out of that or by, by going into this ecstatic dance, we really like connect back to our body because the body is, and there is this beautiful quote that says, we don't have a soul, we, have, uh, we are a soul and we have a body. And I think that's, that's what it is. We kind of take that step out into the observer of our, of our life and we observe our body, how it's moving, how it's resonating with the music. And through that, we're like, yeah, we just become the observer of our body and, and feeling, again, this, this uh, connection um, with our, yeah, with our uh, divine essence, with our source. Um, I like this comment, moving out of image. And I think that is exactly the ego identification. You know, we, we have these images or identities that we create for ourselves, right? I am X person who does this role in society and we, we craft this whole false identity around that. And I feel like what you're talking about is a way to step out of that and step from what comes before that mm -hmm. into a place where we can see things clearly again. And maybe parts of those identities we can disassociate from and actually um, liberate ourselves from, from being so entrenched in a particular way of looking at the world. Mm. And I feel also in a, even if you're not dancing together, like uh, as, as a partner still, like either in an ecstatic dance setting or when you just dance in a circle um, with the tribe. So what I always do in my ecstatic dances is we gather together, we sit in a circle, we, you know, I do a few introductionary words and then everyone is uh, everyone can do can introduce him or herself and make a sound like a sound that at the moment resonates with them and that goes through the whole circle and i always encourage uh, everyone to like whenever you feel that you want to make this sound during the dance so don't talk but if you want to make a sound um, that's totally fine and this kind of brings together the whole the whole tribe the whole circle the whole community into into this uh, space of we are contributing our individuality we are expressing our individuality but still we're contributing to um to the whole thing like to the, the whole of uh, creation or or the tribe the community mm -hmm. and so with that is there structure involved with that because it sounds like there is but it's a different type of structure in a way mm -hmm. It's sort of like uh, maybe chaos theory where you have all these parts, but they're kind of in this swirl together. They're, they're part of this vortex that's being created. There is uh, definitely structure in uh, the music because, yeah, I feel uh, harmony is very important. And let's say we're sitting all in a circle, we're just making our sound. We might go into a more meditative state and then I start with 170 beats per minute, uh, like fire song. Uh, there is no harmony in that. Mm -hmm. So the way I create uh, my sets is always like starting with a very meditative, ethereal way that allows you to drop in, to slow down your heart rate, to get in tune with the circle, to get in tune with yourself, with the dance. And actually prefer to have this initiatory stage for a relatively long time, let's say 10, 10 to 20 minutes, because it really like, it, I think it takes you like roughly seven to 10 minutes to drop in. So with 10 to 20 minutes, you have this time to like easily enjoy, maybe lay it on the ground. And then like it slowly picks up and it, it's like a wave that, that rolls in, but it takes a long time. It's, it's very low at the beginning and um, then it like slowly builds up and then it might come down again a little bit and then it like builds up to the peak 
and the peak can be 170 beats per minute. And I love like when you add a didgeridoo and some some tribal drumming and so on. It, but you have been prepared. You have been you have been um, on the stage for like an hour or or yeah. like uh, like more, and you're prepared for for uh, that high uh, beats per minute. And then it kind of slowly brings you down again into that into that state. And I think it's basically with when you go into that meditation, you have a similar um, a similar wave. And I guess I've never tried it, but I think when you take ecstasy, <laughs> it's pretty similar <laughs> thing. <laughs> so it kind of takes you slowly onto that wave, and then it uh, it fades you out at the end. What I always love. Yeah, it's that um, that thing you describe. It's it's like meditation, or it's it's really you know dropping into that meditative state. It does take time, you know, it, and that's pretty common from a lot of the work I do with brainwave entrainment and soundscapes and meditation. It takes about seven or ten minutes to come from the logical, separate um, awareness that's useful for driving a car, for you know, cooking a meal, for following instructions, for speaking, uh, that type of thing. But to drop all of that into that more meditative state, it takes you know seven to ten minutes to do that. It takes time to come in, and you know, you've been looking at the directions of where the ecstatic dance hall is, and you know, getting there and figuring out where you put your shoes and all that type of thing um, to actually then shut that off and go into the space that's being created. Now, what happens in that space? What, what do people experience? Um, different things, definitely, from some kind. And what I always love to do at the very end is a sharing circle. So it's always beautiful to hear what people experienced because I can see something and I can see something happening. But when they then share what is actually happening, um, it gives me uh, a lot deeper insights. And it kind of, it always has the effect of, it has two effects. One effect is, oh, I already forgot that. Thank you for reminding me. So it might remind someone else of an experience, number one. Number two is like, oh, I'm not the only crazy person in this circle. <laughs> and um, so what, what we had experienced uh, is... I'll just take uh, Ecuador, where we uh, lived recently, as an example, where there's a really beautiful ecstatic dance community, and there was every week ecstatic dance. And we had, it can range from the monkey mind just wouldn't shut off, which is, is fine, um, to like people crying. And uh, I, I remember this like beautiful scene where um, it was almost uh, towards the end, I played. I played Gravity of Love from uh, in, um, Enigma. And she was like hugging me from the back and I could, I could feel her crying, uh, hugging me. And she was just, it was, it was just, just beautiful. I mean, all these emotions that come up and when you allow that to happen. So I would say when you, when you kind of kick away the monkey mind, um, the emotions that have uh, been suppressed, um, they suddenly steer up. And it can be anger. We also had like screaming, but in a in a very um, positive, constructive way, of of um, of like heightening the energy of the whole circle to uh, to crying. And we always had this little altar. And uh, it was also it was another Enigma song. It was the Return to Innocence. I remember it was. It's always Enigma that's making people cry. I don't know why. Um, so she was sitting in front of the altar. It was her very first time at the ecstatic dance uh, in this place. And she just burst it out in tears. And uh, yeah, it was, was just a beautiful experience to witness how, how people are opening up. And I think this creating the space so people can open up, people feel safe to open up. I think that's, that's what we're missing in these times. It's all about like, Fear making and and uh, manipulation and, and media and 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 um, how do you call that the, the f mobile phone phobia or however you <laughs> I don't even know the name. Um, so it's but once you get out of all of that, wow! Then a new space is emerging that we are all, I guess, longing for. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest um, ills of Western society is that. There's so much telling us how to be, how to do, how to be compliant and fit in as a cog in the wheel. 
and we shut down so much of ourselves, we repress ourselves in the process that we need these spaces where we can let that out, let that primal side, let that confusion out, let the stuff that we j might judge as being ugly or wrong, but give it space to sort of clear itself from us. Um, I think one of the terms they used is cathartic release. Mm -hmm. And when you have the music pumping through you, you know, you literally have the drums, you have certain instruments, they're vibrating with the molecules in the body and they're starting to shake those emotions that are stored there that need a little bit of space, that need a little bit of expressing. It starts to get them out for you. That's at least been my experience mm -hmm. with ecstatic dance and with um, the use of uh, music and movement or uh, you know, it's it's a cleansing. Definitely, it's an it's a um, emotional, spiritual, mental, but also like physical. a physical cleansing yeah. because you might sweat like <laughs> like crazy. Well, it it allows you to move in the body in in certain places that might not have seen the light of day for a while, right? We all carry tensions and aches in the body, especially as we get older. Especially if we sit a lot, you know, there's stagnation in the body. And that stagnation needs a little bit of movement, needs a little bit of motion lotion. Mm, yeah, definitely. And one guideline I also forgot is like the, the respect for each other. Uh, because I, I feel like when you, when you go to a party and, and uh, um, yeah, you're drunk or like someone else is drunk and then you're like, yeah, the whole conversation is just um, not, not from a heart-centered space, I guess. And, but with that, you're just, with the ecstatic dance, um, it's, it's just beautiful because you can either connect with someone or not. And no one takes it personal. Like everyone understands that you might need your own space. And so you can connect or you, or, or you don't. And that's also like a beautiful way of, of uh, relating and... Um, uh, like the, the body that they mentioned before where you where you just move i think that's also the beauty is when you let the music move you the body knows how to move because it gets in tune with the music and so it knows how to move when to move where to move and there is no necessity no matter how how like logically stupid like with the logical mind uh, how, no matter how stupid it might look it's, it's never stupid because it's exactly what the body needs yeah, and the body's intelligence is quite incredible. It's it's always there, it's always humming away, but uh, we need to remember that. And so it really seems like from what you're describing, ecstatic dance is the perfect container to invite us to listen to that body's intelligence and maybe let the body drive the bus for a little while. Definitely, yeah, yeah. As opposed to this, you know, sophisticated, intelligent mind that is fucking chaotic driving the bus. <laughs> <laughs> which um, tends to happen. I know a lot of people who, who really connect with dancing for that reason, right? You know, um, there's a lot of areas of life where they struggle, maybe with mental anxiety or with depression or with other things. But when they dance and they dance often, it seems to take care of a lot of the sophisticated Western mental ailments that um, you know, creep into modern life. Definitely. And I think we can attribute it to like different parts because like once we get, once we get the, the, the brain out of the, out of the way, like everything kind of um, um, tunes or reattunes naturally. Right. So in a way it's, um, it's a therapy, you could say. It's a very fun therapy. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think that's the important part nowadays. Would you agree with this is that there's so many people out there that, um, you know, their healing journey is long, arduous, and it's a grind. And it doesn't have to be all the time, at least. And that we can actually do things that allow us to heal and to harmonize ourselves that are actually really fun. I, I definitely uh, think so. It's, it's um, I, I just posted today, uh, I, I can't remember the exact wording, but it was basically like, enjoy life and have fun. <laughs> So it's the, it's the fun uh, part that kind of went missing. And I think especially in the, in the last uh, two years, um, it was very interesting to, to, because we kind of 
got out of this community, we, we, we like, there was more and more distancing. And I think that's why it's more and more important now to gather together, to, to connect uh, with music, uh, with the tribe. So I think, yeah, it's, it's now needed more than ever. I feel. Yeah. When you lived in Ecuador, it sounded like the community there really gathered around the dance. You know, there's a lot of people who are modern people, but they're still connected with this um, primordial, you know, ancient um, uh, modality, which is, uh, and I shouldn't even say modality, this ancient um, way of being connected with the dance. What did you notice about the effect of regular ecstatic dance on the fabric of community? It was, it was definitely a place where community regularly gathered and it, it's like uh, every um, Tuesday. If you're in Ecuador right now, you have uh, a few more hours. It's happening in the afternoon, Tuesday. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was, there was like a, a core group of people that was always there and the, the DJ was, um, we switched. So we had like, let's say seven or six to 10 DJs. So every week there was another DJ with uh, another style, another focus, another theme. Um, and yeah, it was, it was definitely a, a beautiful way. And also for oneself to like one, one day or one, one dance, you could go to, to like a completely different space or place than the other dance. So it's also for oneself as an individual understanding that we are different every time and that we're going through a different journey every time. And yeah, we all know like with sound healing, it's the same. You can lie someone 10 times, one hour behind the gong and the experience will always be different all these 10 times. And, but it's, it's kind of the, the progress uh, where we are at at the, at the moment. But it's, it's definitely like this, this woman that has built up this community. She built it up over the last 10 years. And you could, mm. you could feel that. And she's amazing at holding space. I could really like learn a lot from her. And um, the way she, she shared, she like started with the, um, one of the first ecstatic dances like 20 years ago, like a gypsy kind of, um, kind of uh, start this whole thing was. And yeah it's it's definitely a lot to learn from this it's a it's a school for life definitely very cool and um you also mentioned too that the, the, the community in ecuador they gathered a lot do you feel like their ability to gather and express things authentically and rawly and vulnerably to each other really stemmed from their participation in the dance i would say dance is one modality of uh, bringing them together because what i feel is that the dance it allows you to be your true self and it allows you to express your true self and you are seen as how you truly really are you don't put the mask on you're just you're just like naked not physically naked but like um spiritually naked maybe and I think this, this opens up uh, a lot of spaces because you start resonating or others start resonating with you on a much deeper level. And we're not just talking about the weather and it's raining today, and, uh, but it's like, it's like really it's an, an implicit knowing, an implicit feeling. And there was also um, quite a few like either couples uh, or, like, or like pairs, I would say, that kind of came together and started dancing or even um, like groups, two, three, four people starting with um, um, expressional dance with like gentle touch dance and so on. So it was really, really nice to see how also respectful um, the whole space was. Right on. I want to talk specifically now about your approach to the dance. What do you bring? that is different what do you what is the martin secret elixir that you bring in <laughs> that um you know uh really attracts people to the work that you do for me and that's also part of what i learned in ecuador is the holding space is one of the most important parts like 
setting the space, creating the circle, and throughout the dance, whatever happens, uh, holding this space. And from all our sound channels we've done, we, like when I say we, it's uh, my wife and I, Marie and I, um, we did a lot of sound channels together. And people went through a lot of stuff during these sound channels. So we're already kind of used to holding space. And, but we learned to really like also integrate it into um, ecstatic dance, the holding space part. And also giving everyone through the sound their individual voice so they can they can show well i'm here and then the wave is super important the music and with ecstatic dance it's always kind of a move between like adding some invocations adding some prayers but not too much voice so people uh, do not get back into their brain but they still stay connected um and yeah, it's, it's always a, uh, a nice mix that needs to be generated. And I feel that like the whole thing is one wave. There's not one song and then the other song and then the next song and the next song. It's like whole wave that takes you onto this whole journey. And at the very end, I think that might be the secret elixir is uh, whenever possible, um, I, uh, I do a little like gong sound channel. I just uh, put the gong in the middle and like the let's call, let's let's call it shavasana the shavasana at the end where everyone is lying down and and enjoying it's uh, with the gong it just it just allows to integrate the, right. the end uh, integrate the whole journey at the end and yeah, yeah i think that's that's, that's very important to have those natural crescendos right because you've moved so much and then you know it's the tension and the tension of moving and the release of lying and integrating and, and doing absolutely nothing in complete stillness. And also the cool down part, I give it sometimes up to 20 minutes because it's, wow. it's needed. We we had the dance was like roughly one hour, 45 to two hours. That we mm -hmm. did. So this gives just the music. And I know because I have the recording. So that's the recorded <laughs> music I have. Um, yeah. So I know that that's roughly the length. And uh, I have it all on SoundCloud, by the way. <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah. I, I forgot. I totally forgot um, to post that link. Do you have a link we can uh, get up uh, yes, on the screen so people is. can see? I will put it in the description afterwards so you can check out Martin's sets and you can do some ecstatic dance at home. Some, some we've also got something very, very special that we're offering with, with Martin. And this is uh, a partnership between Martin's work and Octave Leap. I'll just show people here. We have an event coming up next Friday. It's called We Are a Tribe Awakening with DJ Merlin. That is Martin's uh, stage name. And you can check it out. The link is in the description below. It's completely choose your own contribution, but he's going to basically be DJing a set live. You can watch it later too. That's the beautiful part. But you're going to get a taste from the comfort of your own home, uh, either live during the set or later um, for whatever, whatever price you choose really. So this is a way to support um, ecstatic dance in the world. Martin's work, uh, the building of the Octave Leap community. So it's it's really going to be a beautiful thing. And this is um, this is the direction we want to head. You know, there's so much information we can provide out there, which is great, but it really needs to reside in the body. You know, we really need to be more embodied. So I'm going to argue with you. I don't think it's about getting out of the body. I think it's about getting deeper into the body, um, because uh, I know I've tried some of your sets, and they've definitely reconnected. They've allowed me to uh, stretch out, and they've allowed me to. Um, release tension and get back to that state of rawness. So you can head over here to the Octave Leap page and check out the event for yourself and maybe even register, uh, which I would highly recommend because there's already been uh, a number of people that have registered for it. I think it's going to be a really hot event. I think this is really something that people have been waiting for because this is a way to engage, um, you know, without having to um, say anything or come with ideas. It's just basically showing up and having your own experience. So I thought that was super cool that um, you know you offered that to the community and I'm really, really, really looking uh, forward to that. And that's my, uh, that's the ecstatic dance sets that I've put online on SoundCloud. Uh-huh, okay, cool. So yeah, you can see it up on the screen right now, but you look for DJ Merlin, the lion wizard yes. is his, uh, Full stage name, not just DJ Mer Merlin. There's DJ Merlin was already taken, so uh -huh. 
Of course. <laughs> now, now you've made it the signature completely yours. So um, really looking forward to that event. What can people expect from this one? What kind of uh, sounds do you feel you're going to be working with for uh, We Are a Tribe Awakening? It's, I really love this, um, this uh, ancient way. And there is a question if we'll be able. It's, I guess it's just, um, it's just uh, me, right? Yeah, it'll just be you. There'll be people in the chat. So mm -hmm. you'll be able to talk to each other in the chat and share your ideas. Uh, but it won't be like a, a call with cameras or anything like that. Yep. Um, and yeah, I will. Of course, at the beginning, I will create a circle. I will, I will uh, create a space, so we can, we can, um, yeah, drop into that together. Mm -hmm. And regarding the sounds, like I feel very connected to this, to this ancient tribal sounds. I absolutely love the didgeridoo. I love um, drums, of course, but I also there are like beautiful invocations that are like spread every every now and then and these like really kind of of deepen this uh, community feeling hmm. and um yeah so it will be it will be a mix but it's it's definitely like very um ecstatic down temple tribal earthy fiery um i guess yeah if you if you if you name it or if you want to put it in into into uh, something we know it's we will go through the elements so we will start awesome. with ether and we go up to fire coming back to ether and what i also always um do what i'm what i'm thank you for signing up <laughs> and <laughs> and um what i also feel is very important that the the songs that's why it sounds like one big song are um tuned to each other so i mm -hmm. only always take songs that fit from the tuning to the previous one. And through that, we basically go through the whole um, octave. And yeah, we make an octave leap, right? <laughs> because, <laughs> and uh, yeah, because like, we all have like these stuck energies in our body. And through going through all the different uh, tones or different pitches, um, everything that's stuck within us uh, is, is, can be freed. And if you're ready to free it, um, there is a there is a pitch for everyone, I would say. Yeah, yeah. The different parts of the body have a, have a different resonant frequency, and when that frequency is struck, you know, it's it's funny the the you know, the seven. If you ascribe to the seven tones of the the major scale, all all deal with different parts of the body from the root up to the the top of the head, right? And you can there's certain vowel sounds you can make that actually stimulate those areas, but there's also certain pitches too that activate those areas and open them up. And of course, you know, different systems say that different parts of the body correspond to different things, but um, you don't have to believe anything. You can feel it with the, with the dance and the music. I think that's the uh, uh, sound healer once, uh, because I was like asking him like, do I need seven crystal balls for all the seven chakras? And he said, you know, back then the Aborigines, they just went into the forest and they found uh, like, a, like a piece of tree that had a hole in it. They were just blowing in it. It made an amazing sound, and that's what they used. They didn't care about C and D and E and F and G and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that's it's again that Western mind that wants things to be organized, exactly. right? <laughs> and the intention is the the Western and the marketing mind, because obviously the marketing mind. Yes, I can't forget about that one. <laughs> and um, um, yeah, so it's at the end of the day, it's the intention. And what what mm. you said before to argue about the getting out of the body is I think that getting out of the body means getting like deep into the body. The way out is the way in. Oh, I see. And I yeah. think that's why we're kind of uh, talking about the same. It's just... Uh, yeah, getting out of the identified um, persona we have and getting yeah. into the real image. depth of the body. Yes, the image. That was a great one. Yeah. yeah. Kenai. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, yeah, this is beautiful because this event and, and the, the whole spirit of dance really fits in with the theme of community we have at Octave Leap. And of course, uh, Martin is a part of our community. I mean, you know, we're, we're doing so many new things and this is just the start too. So, you know, there's a chance Martin will be a regular contributor with um, his music and it's not just going to be ecstatic dance. We also do sound journeys as well. 
And I think that's really needed at this time. You know, amongst anything else, sound is one of those things that is universal. The music is universal. And um, if you look at any great cultural revolution in history, there was always a soundtrack to it. <laughs> winds and of so, change, I remember. The winds of change, exactly. <laughs> Um, there's one other uh, community thing that I want to share with everybody today, and so I'm just going to um, pull that up. But we've launched the Octave Leap crypto community, and what that is, is it's a place where we can gather for uh, prosperity. So the link to that is down below. But this is basically where we gather, and I provide uh, special updates for everybody. We, we do trading signals. Um, we provide astrological insights into what's happening, as well as the big picture. And so this is a continuity continuation of a lot of the work with crypto that's been done in the past, but it's also beginner friendly. So if you're interested in working as a group, working intelligently as a group of people with people who know what they're doing in crypto and thriving as a collective, I would highly recommend checking this out. And the link again to that is in the description below. We also have a Discord, the server you can actually access for a free version too. So you don't even need to get a membership for this. There is a, a version for that, but they, you don't have access to some of the deeper insights and the trading signals with that. So that's just another example of how we're creating community uh, with Octave Leap. Because during these times, you know, community is the glue that keeps us together. We're allowed to laugh and have those shared experiences and realize we're not alone going through this. And I think Martin did an excellent job explaining that with the dance. But of course, there's so many other facets of life that we need to address. We can't just be uh, dancing all the time. You know, we do have to consider our um, economic situation, our um, you know, organization, you know, what, I don't want to call it politics, but the way that we organize as a group, the, the, the shared values and the way that we actually build things and execute things. And for a lot of people spread across the world who might not have anyone in their physical vicinity, Online communities are a powerful way to get started. So being part of and plugged into a community that resonates with you is super important during these times. Of course, you're invited to join ours, especially if you like um, things that are aligned with the new frequency. So doing things differently, you know, coming back into um, a more natural alignment with life, you know, being in the flow of life. If you look at it, it you really drill it down. Everyone's seeking... Um, natural connection, except for people who are completely in this, you know, Borg like mentality. You know, if you look at what people spend their money on, they usually go vacationing to beautiful places. You know, when they go to eat food, they want the freshest, they want the most un um, adulterated food out there. We're all seeking this reconnection with nature. We're just going through it through very uh, synthetic and often very expensive ways. And um, by dancing, it's one of the simplest, most direct ways of getting there. And so this stuff is offered freely. And that's why we do this as a choose your own contribution. So thank you, Martin, for coming on and, uh, and chatting today about your experience with ecstatic dance, what it is, um, what people can expect from it. I, um, you know, I, I definitely learned a few things and I've done it many times before, but you know, you're, you are the guy that's uh, traveled to, I don't know how many different continents now with ecstatic dance, at least three, right? Yes, yes, um, I need to count. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's especially with the sound healing and so on. I think that's like coming from that life part, bringing into because uh, a DJ set is much easier to carry than a gong. So it was like, how can I bring music <laughs> further without taking 20 kilogram of gong uh, with me every time? <laughs> yeah, well, of course, now you can record the gong and you can put it onto a sampler and you can yes. have that recording. It's not the same. But it's, um, it's a great way of, of putting everything onto your laptop and being able to reproduce it. You know, exactly. There's a, an old saying that, you know, if you can get 80% of the way with and have everything there, it's, it's a real treat as opposed to having to lug a gong overseas. Mm, definitely. And also well, on SoundCloud on, my, on, the, on the same you will also find, I started uploading um, gong um, sound journeys. So, okay. Yep. This one points to the ecstatic dance, but also under my, my name, you find, uh, um, and I will keep posting regular gong sound chants because, yeah, I think the gong is, is love at first listen for me. And I just want to keep sharing that. <laughs> well, you've, you've openly just shared and given so much valuable content to people. And, um, 
you know, how many hours of, of recorded material do you have up there? Um, you mean on SoundCloud? Yeah. Between the uh, sound journeys and the ecstatic dance. Good. I just recently started with the sound journey. So there's just one sound journey online, but I, I keep uploading more in the next weeks. But for ecstatic dance, it's like roughly, I would say maybe 20 hours, 20, 25 hours, oh. something like this. So they, they could almost go a whole day without sleeping yes. and dancing. Yes. Yeah. Remember to stay hydrated if you decide to do that. <laughs> and, and it's not um, a health advice in any way. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Martin. And uh, it's been a pleasure. I hope you all uh, enjoyed this. Please share your experience with Martin in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, like always, if you want to stay up to date on what we're doing, make sure you join our Telegram group and the link is down below. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care. This is Octave Leap. Innovation, regeneration, and human optimization.